Everybody and welcome to Eye of Soul Radio. I am psychic medium Jamie, and I am just waiting for the appending thunderstorm as we just got a severe thunderstorm warning here in San Diego for certain parts, and it has become quite dark and cloudy. And uh, yeah, so who knows what this show might hold? Anywho, electricity in a storm is probably one of the best ways for me to actually connect with spirit because it's very quick because you have all of the elements so we actually had a thunderstorm which if you're in san diego you know that is few and far between uh, a few days ago at about four o'clock in the morning and the electricity from the lightning and the thunder and then the rain was just absolutely magical for actually doing some connection 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 with uh, my spirit team. And then we had quite a few uh, stray energies coming in as well. So who knows what might happen today? Just a heads up. If you lose me, that might be why. So today's show has, I, some of you have been, I know this was supposed to be a show like two weeks ago and then last week, uh, life has been quite chaotic for us here uh, on the earth plane at times. And so now I'm finally getting to it. And what I love is that this is from my perspective. This is from doing some research out there and talking to people and doing what I know well. And at the same time, it is by no means to diminish anybody else's viewpoint on any of these topics, which is rituals, ceremonies, symbols, right? And the more that I got into this topic, the more fascinating it became about how all of them are actually very much intertwined with one another. So we're going to talk today on myths, traditional stories, explaining the past and the worldview, right? Rituals, ceremonies, and symbols and how all are incorporated into all three of them. So I wanna dive into it because I got a lot of material to cover. Uh, I might pull a card here or there as well. So give us a shout out on Transformation Talk Radio or I have Soul Radio over here at Shades of Spirit um, as well. Give us a holler, let us know you're here. So let's start with religion, right? That's generally a taboo topic for most people because there are so many different types of religions, right? There's so many different uh, views on religion. Uh, and some people have no views uh, as those atheists just don't have that belief system. But again, there are symbols within the religious you know, um, background as well. Religion for all intents and purposes today in this show's topic is a system of beliefs, including the belief in all of the existence, right? And at least in one of the following, a human soul or spirit, a deity or higher being, or self after death of one's body. The term religion defines a system of formally organized beliefs and practices, typically centered around the worship of a supernatural force or being, whatever that is to you. God, source, Buddha, whatever that is, right? But it's a system of beliefs. And a lot of times it's a system of organized beliefs, okay? Now myths, right? We're gonna be bouncing back and forth between all of these. This is just a brief little synopsis for the show today. Myths are traditional stories accepted as history. Interesting, right? They serve to explain the worldview of people. And as a noun, it is a legend or tradition. And it's that story concept, a legendary story that you might hear or traditional stories that you might hear, usually concerning some being or hero or event. And that's that myth part of it, right? It doesn't have to just incorporate one aspect. It, it can be multiple. Uh, it can be with or without a determinable basis of facts or natural explanation, hence the word myth, right? 
don't know if you guys ever watched Mythbusters. I don't remember what channel that was on. I don't even know if they're still on. Uh, but they're there trying to prove the facts, the myths to be either correct or not correct. And to dismiss any probability of it, you know, not working, why is that? So it's just kind of an interesting show on that scientific side of it. Uh, also, it's especially um, one that is concerned with deities as well, or demigods, and explains some practice, right, or phenomenal of nature. So there's your myths, right? You think of your demigods and gods and, and the stories behind all that. That's a myth. At the same time, does it mean that it's not true? By no means. And then you've got rituals, right? Rituals are ceremonies in which gods or goddesses or a concept of the sacred are honored. A milestone is celebrated, energy is focused towards a specific goal. So if you are doing rituals, right? If you have a ritualistic uh, routine, we're gonna get to that at the end of the show, a whole bunch of tips for you to understand. The word ritual is not a scary uh, term. The word ritual is something that we can tune into, that we can use, um, that we are using every day. So that's what makes this unique as well. So if you think about religion, right? It's a widely practiced, and it's widely practiced through rituals, which combine the ideas of mythology represented by symbols. I know, hold on here, right? That just incorporated everything I was just talking about. Religion, practicing through rituals, which combines the ideas of mythology represented by symbols. So I want you guys to think about that. If you are someone who goes to church or has grown up in that environment, um, there are certain symbols that we see that correlate with religion, right? Now, one example is prayer. Somebody I'm out there, I know is going, excuse me, right? How are you putting prayer in this? Well, prayer can take many forms. When I talk to clients and I'll be like, I, they're telling me that you're praying, that you're connecting, right? It could also be a part of a set ritual and it can be performed alone or in groups. Think of group prayer, right? It can take the form of incantations, hymns, formal creeds, statements, or spontaneous, spontaneous utterance in the praying person. And if you think about this concept of prayer, it doesn't have to be tied to religion necessarily, right? Sometimes we will get together in healing circles and we will do a prayer, right? Or maybe we will come together and we will share in a, um, a guided meditation. We're all putting that same energy into that universal consciousness and sending it out into the world. Hopefully we're all doing it in a space of love and light. Now, moving into symbolism, I, I want you to think about this part as well. Anthropology covers a lot of symbolism. Now, I am not an anthropologist. <laughs> I know, surprise. Um, but when you start studying this more and more, you start to learn where a lot of this originated from or who works with this type of um, topic. It covers a vast area of human life, symbols, symbolism. From the body to the significance of colors through worships of idols and other religious symbols. Religious symbols, there we go again, right? Connecting it on that level. It also talks about to the defining characteristic they stand for, something other than their intrinsic property. For example, okay, go with me on this one, the color red, right? Most of us, I want you to think about that right now. What does the color red mean to you? What does it signify? What is the first thing that you come um, to think of with the color red, right? So a lot of people are out there right now, I know you're thinking of the octagon stop sign, color red, right? Uh, also, it can be a sign of danger in different societies, right? Red, stop. Whoa, hold on. Danger's on the, on the horizon here, okay? Uh, conversely, it can also be seen as the color of luck or marriage in Chinese and Indian cultures. And that's pretty cool. I actually have friends of Chinese culture who they do, the red is a very prominent color for them, right? You get the red envelopes of money at Chinese New Year. You've got the candy wrappers that are red. You've got... So, that for them, it's luck, it's prosperity, right? For Catholics, the bread and wine are the symbolic of the body and blood of Jesus Christ. So there's part of your symbolism, okay? And in partaking of those elements, the believer commemorates the sacrificial death of Christ. Symbols, intertwining in the myths, intertwining in the, the 
the religious aspects of it, all of those coming together. So that's why this made it so fascinating, because I was like, there isn't, there's a separation, there's a definition like in everything that we do, but there isn't necessarily only just that and how they all intertwine and work themselves together. So when we come back from great, great break, we're gonna talk about rituals as well and how they're inspired by stories of mythology. Okay, now you've intertwined those again and continue evolving on this topic. You guys can book appointments. Now I have August blocked off, so I'm gonna be opening up that soon, but I still have the $75 special for July. And that will be the last month that we will have the $75 special, probably until the holidays or so. We'll see how that goes. So if you're looking to book an appointment and get a reading with me, it's a psychic medium one hour reading, $75. You can go to shadesofspirit.com. And we also have a few uh, group events coming up next month as well. I will not have my schedule open as much for one-on-one -on -one readings. Spirit is connecting through me lately, and it's all about coming together as a group. So there will be limited spots that open up for one-on-one -on -one readings. One-on-one uh, -on -one readings are going to be still done through Zoom. And then we're going to come together in group circles and to be able to do the reading. So the first one's gonna be our sacred circle is back. We did this all through uh, the pandemic. It was all through Zoom. We're gonna bring that back in person and it's gonna be our sacred circle uh, for group readings. And it's gonna also include a healing element at the end like the past two months. And these healing elements are great when we can bring our energy together and do this as one and to support one another and build that sacred community together. So that is happening on, let me look here. This is the first Saturday, I think it's the seventh. I'll double check that at 5 p.m. And then we also have encompassing your spirit team. I love teaching this class. I've been nagged and nagged and nagged for months and months and months to please, please, please bring this class back because it is so profound because we teach you the ways to connect with your team because we're not sitting here preaching and telling you where you need to go, who you need to talk to, Bob's behind you, this is what you're supposed to be doing with your life. It's a genuine, authentic connection. These are very small groups because it takes time and energy for us to connect to each one of you in that group and then to work together in order to bring messages through for one another as well as yourselves. It's a beautiful class that is going to be um, on, I keep thinking this is August, we're not there yet. It'll be August 15th and it's on a Sunday. You can go to Shades of Spirit LLC on Facebook to check those out. Message me if you want spots because they'll go fast and I will take a break and see you just after these messages. Welcome back to I Have Soul Radio. I am Psychic Medium Jamie. And today's topic is discussing a few different topics, which is always fun, and how they actually merge together. So it's the symbolism, it's myths, it's re religion and rituals, and how each of them play a part in our daily lives on different levels, right? So going into rituals, we just kind of finished up with symbolism and some religion, prayer, um, you know, some of the myths, the background of, of how they kind of, you know, what their definition is. Rituals are inspired by stories of mythology passed down through generations to perpetuate the traditions of a religion and are often enclosed many ideas of symbolic meanings. Which is true. You look at a lot of these rituals, um, you look at a lot of these different, I, I say, you know, I'll bring up Wiccan. I have a client who is Wiccan. And some of the rituals and the rites of passages and the things that they do uh, have been passed down. And it isn't something that if you go to Barnes and Noble, you can buy the book on Wiccan and then create your spells and do your rituals that way. Though I'm, again, not saying there's anything wrong with that. Just hoping you're doing all of this in your highest and best and in a space of love and light. Uh, but when you actually get down to familial lines, uh, some of these rituals, they are passed down. They're not written down. Uh, I have a friend of mine whose grandmother was definitely into that witch type component aspect of life uh, and actually had written it all down. And then they couldn't find the book to be able to go back to. But a lot of times they don't want it to get in the wrong hands. So you learn from your great grandparents, your grandparents, your parents, and it gets passed around through there, right? Also, symbols are often based on specific episodes that recounted the myths. So how else can we remember if we don't put them into symbols? Though you have to think about the beginning of time when man was just learning how to communicate. We did it through symbols, right? 
symbols that were drawn on caves, symbols that were, you know, etched into stone, symbols that we created with our hands. Uh, so it would make sense for this to be a part of that evolution and to continue growing through. Symbols are often based um, also with recounted myths, signifying a special certain worldview. During ancient times, the complexity of the human communication was made possible through symbols. And if you look at kids, um, uh, for me, if sign language is a form of symbols. You're talking with your hands. They are learning how to articulate what their needs are before their brain can actually work through a uh, language, right? And so they're learning through hand signals, if you will. And we're teaching them how to stop and do you want more and, you know, thank you and all of those and these toddlers, these little ones, and they're able to communicate. And I have friends who have kids that they taught sign language to versus I did not do that with my kids. And you did see the frustration sometimes in my kids to where the other ones were just easily able to communicate through this symbolic process, which is just very fascinating to me. Uh, rituals have deep and multidimensional meanings. In other words, just like symbols, rituals can often symbolize more than one thing, which is true. If you're going to do a ritual, a lot of times you are bringing in all sorts of elements in order to do that. Rituals are very similar to symbols, but they include action. So this is the action based. The symbols are just hanging out there, right? They're not actively engaged until we put them into that ritualistic component. And we start working the pot, if you will, and bringing those symbols in one way or another, right? Rituals are symbolic actions. So I wanna get into the ritual aspect of it. Now, what's kind of funny is, you know, I don't, mind sharing this story. No names, of course, are going to be <laughs> acknowledged here. But I did have a client one time who I had uh, was talking to and was working through some stuff on their end. And it started to make sense to them because they had been told that I was greeting them, that I was putting out this mojo um, in their space, which made me laugh. Because first and foremost, if I knew what the hell that meant, I might have been able to say something. Gritting someone, I, I was like, are you freaking kidding me? But after our session and hearing how that was a topic of conversation in a, a different community, I was like, wow, she believed that something was going on initially through that conversation because she gave it power. And when I was able to explain that I don't even know what that is, the, the type of what the type of work that we do. We do a lot of work with crystals. We do, I like working with candles. There are certain components of vibrations that associate with colors and the stones, right? Um, we were all able to kind of laugh at the end of how absolutely ridiculous that was. But I do have clients that come to me who do talk about they had been cursed or a curse was put on them, right? And that there was some sort of ritual done in order to cause X, Y, Z to happen in their life. Now, if you read books on manifesting, you will see a lot of these stories come up as well. And if we give it power, if we give that symbol that we, you know, believe that they've given us or that ritual that they've done to us, um, and we've given it power, our words become thoughts that become actions. So if we are taking that action, those words that they've said to us, and a lot of times they'll hear those words, you know, if anybody of you watch Practical Magic, I know it's my favorite movie, Right. And she points her finger and she hopes, I think it gets chicken pox. Right. And they're like, oh, we don't cast. Right. But now what's going to happen is, is that kid's going to go home and that mom and thinking, oh, my gosh, she's now put this 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 cast on us, the spell on us. And it's going to happen. We're going to get the chicken pox. Right. There was a story in one of the manifesting books that I had read where the gentleman actually believed a psychic when she told him he had four months to live to the point where he died four months to the day of that reading, even though others around him told him that that is not possible. But we start to believe it and buy into it. And then when these things do happen, then we've given more power to the person that has created this. That's why I say we can do rituals. We can do this in a prayer setting. We can bring these symbols in. We can use symbols during these times, right? As long as you're doing it for the right reasons. Because I'm going to tell you, karma is a bitch, people. Karma is a bitch. But I wanted to get into the ritual part of it because I want you guys to know that it doesn't have to be negative. It's not negative unless we choose to make it that way. So 
let's just start out with the negative stuff and get it out of the way, right? Here are some types of rituals performed by various groups all around the world. Some sects practice one or all different types of these rituals. So if you, I, let's, just, let's just call it as it is. You have the demonic rituals, the satanic rituals, right? There are those religions, there are those groups, excuse me, that, um, that stand behind that energy that you know are out there with their altars. They're creating different rituals, their sacrifice. The sacrifice is a symbol that they've now put into action in that ritual, right? Uh, sometimes there is prayer as well depending on who they're praying to, right? It's not going to be necessarily found out of your everyday Bible. You have an initiation. So think about this part. And to any group, organization, cult, et cetera, there are certain rites and rituals of initiation in which the seeker or aspirant must partake in in order to join. Well, what's the first thing that comes to your mind on in initiations? A lot of times it is college, right? You get to college, you want to be initiated into, you know, Phi, Beta, Kappa, whatever, um, your sororities, right? There's some type of initiation. These might include vows of secrecy, right? You could also have those ones that are not so great that are initiating you into their organization or their group. Uh, also, it's a rebirth of some kind into the group or an oath of loyalty to the group. That's what that initiation process is. Now, I don't know about you guys, but when I got to join Color Guard in my 10th grade year, uh, we they took us out and we had to like do certain fun things around our community uh, as our initiation. And I think it was like, they dressed us up all kind of funky and tied balloons to our hair and made us go out and do like push-ups in the parking lot at 7-Eleven, like no hazing, but there was just initial, like this little like initiation. So you felt like you were part of the group. You felt like you were part of that, that group of us just, you know, brand new out there doing it, you know, everyone was great and nice and it wasn't anything that was daunting, but at the same time, I was put into this initiation to join this group, right? So that is type of a ritual. You've got your magical rituals, kind of my favorite, I like those ones. Uh, they may be practiced by a group or by oneself. So your magical rituals are things too that we do ourselves that we create. If we're doing a release and intentions workshop, right? We're doing some type of ritual, though it's writing and releasing and connecting and meditating. It's still a general process. So you can do that by yourself, which a lot of you do, or you can do it as a group. Uh, worship, rituals of worship include prayer, the consecration of food and drink towards a deity, invoking the name of the deity, right? So I think you guys have heard a lot with different uh, groups like that as well that will invoke particular deities, deities, however you want to say it, into that process, right? The celebration, rituals of celebration, and <sighs> it's like worship. This is what, what cracks me up. And I actually had an argument with one person the other day. I'm like, look, this is, this is, this is what they're talking about. Um, they usually fall on a specific reoccurring day of the year, much like Yule or Halloween. So people will celebrate Halloween, right? And that is a type of ritual. <laughs> I guess some could say that our birthdays are a type of ritual. If you have some type of gathering, if you blow out the candles on your cake every year, make sure you have candles for so-and-so's birthday, that's a ritual. It's also almost like a rite of passage into that next birthday, right? But you've got the symbolism of the fire and making that wish. It's like prayer, that same type of thing for that upcoming year. Uh, also protection, protection ritual. Uh, the banishing, the lesser banishing ritual of the pentagram uh, is aimed at directing divine energy for protection of the ritualist. Um, I will do protection amulets. I will make them. I use them with candles. Our energy is out there all the time with the work that we do. And therefore, you know, we know that there's people that want to come in and self-sabotage. We know that there's jealousy and envy and greed. See it day in and day out, right? <laughs> Don't think you can hide. Yeah, we see what's going on. So in order to protect our eye, our eye, to protect our energy and to protect our space and our business, I will. It, it can be as simple as me praying if you want, or talking or connecting with my main angel who does my shields and going through that ritual, that process of being able to create that protection around me. There's a day that goes by that I'm not doing that. 
We've got a few more on here on the rituals, which are pretty cool. I want to get back into a break real quick to continue this topic so that we can get to the end and then give you guys some different ways that you're using them every day and how they can help you and how we can keep them in a positive space. So again, go to Shades of Spirit LLC. I will have up, uh, I promise LaShawn, um, by the end of this week, which is tomorrow, uh, our empath class. LaShawn is going to be leading her first class and it is going to be an empath class. It is going to be very powerful. It's all coming from her perspective, what she has learned as an empath. Then I'm gonna take you through some exercises of that as well. And that is going to be on August 21st. So I'm excited for that class. You'll be able to get your tickets for that shortly. All right, you guys stick with me. I will see you right after the break. And welcome back to I Have Soul Radio. I am psychic medium Jamie talking about myths and religion and symbols and prayer, all that fun stuff, right? So we're almost through the types of rituals. Now, this is not every single ritual out there, right? But it's some that we are all familiar with, right? Uh, we have heard people talk about demonic and satanic rituals, initiation rituals, magic rit rit rituals. That gets to be a tongue twister, by the way. Uh, celebration, protection. But what about healing? Do you ever think about that as being a ritual? And for those of you that work with any type of Reiki work, right? We get into the initiation with symbols. So now we've added that dynamic in there. Healing rituals often performed in private with one person acting as the healer of another. We are a channel. So now we are connecting with the divine in order to be that channel to heal right? Or at least to facilitate healing, to help, you know, speed up the process, if you will. But when I'm doing my Reiki classes, and I am teaching people, we go through an attunement process. It's kind of like an initiation, I guess, right? And so we sit in that moment, and we call in the deities, the deities, we call in the ascended masters, Reiki masters, we bring everyone in, your angels, whoever's there for your highest and best, and we bring them all together. And then we put symbols in. Those symbols have been passed down from generations upon generations upon generations. So healing is just one for me that's just an aha moment of how we do put all of it together. We work in that prayer state of mind, that connection state of mind, the symbols, and bringing that into that ritualistic space. We create the space as well. Transformation. This type is considered a ritual to transform the self. And I don't know how many of us are going through that. Oh, I do. I know all of us are going through that, especially after this pandemic, especially of what the world has taken us through the past year and a half. We are transcending. We are moving into a different direction. Now, what's unfortunate is that those people that are not qualified to guide people through this transition, they're coming now to us to help kind of undo what was, what was told. They're coming in in knots. So transformation is also a ritualistic experience. And it might be through writing and journaling and connecting and releasing, right? That is, that is a type. Storytelling which is always fun. Uh, I know I have friends who have grandparents and uh, I actually just did a reading this week and I was talking about the stories and write their story, get the book out. And I go, but he's an excellent storyteller and he's still on the other side trying to do that. Well, he happened to be someone that wrote in magazines and wrote articles and created a book of his little stories uh, that he had done. Um, and that was time for her to recount those and what she was creating of memories, right? So storytelling, it involves the telling of stories through narrative or through song. Sometimes in Native American culture, they're sitting around the fire, they're connecting, they're telling stories, they're doing it through song as well, right? All sorts of cultures have different ways that they work through this. The fire ritual, one of my favorites, I love the element of fire. It's cleansing, it's therapeutic, it's powerful. Uh, whether a bonfire, a candle, or some other method. So for me, I love candles. Like I said, um, there's different types of, I guess you call them rituals, right? That I do with the candles. And then when we do a release of intentions, well, we could in person. We're getting there, folks. We're getting there. Um, it is a real, realistic, a ritualistic process. 
it's writing, it's connecting, it's going and putting that out into the fire, allowing it to be this cleansing uh, experience. It's about releasing, it's about connecting with the universe. A funeral. A funeral ritual involves the sending of the dead to the next world, whatever your belief system is. Not to be confused with necromancy, which is just the opposite. So a funeral involves, and if you think about that, certain religions, their funerals last for days. They're symbols, right? The flowers. Maybe it is the priest that's standing there with his Bible, right? Maybe they're putting a rosary in the casket. There's all sorts of symbols that go into that. I know that I've been to my fair share of funerals in my life, and even to the point of lowering the casket into the ground is part of that ritual, is part of that connection, is the symbolic part of, of going back from human state into that transition state and then to the other, and to the other side. That one I found interesting because you don't really think of that as being a ritual, but there, you know, certain cultures, you know, celebrate for a certain amount of time, certain cultures, certain, certain things with their, with the bodies, like it's amazing, but it is that practice. So what are the four traits of rituals? Okay. So that's, what's fun. Uh, let's go through the four traits of rituals. Yay. Uh, a ritual passes on tradition. People have given significance towards events and it carries as a memory throughout the history. So that kind of sounds a little bit like when we moved up here uh, with myths, traditional stories accepted as history. See where they intertwine again. That's what's fascinating to me. They just continue to intertwine on that part of it. Also, a ritual need our bodies. It is accompanied by our words. And a lot of times it forms a community. Now, I have been very hesitant in my speaking when I talk to clients, when I do workshops, uh, even these shows, to use the word ritual because it gives a negative connotation to a lot of people because their immediate response is thinking something darker, uh, oh yeah, they're <laughs> gritting, whatever that crap was. Um, but moving into that space of, of fear, we don't have to fear the word ritual. We don't have to fear myths because their stories passed down, right? And a lot of times these are coming directly from maybe gods or goddesses. Maybe you're hearing something about Athena, right? The prince, the princess, the goddess of, of war and strategy. Maybe you want to connect with her energy, right? The symbolism for her, maybe it's her sword, whatever that might be, that to you could mean strength. So I want you to kind of dissect things in your life right now that can bring in more of a meaning, right? Everything has a meaning, everything holds a vibration. And that's what's so important, right? Her shield is for protection. Well, protection is on here, right? That's part of a ritual. If you see people, let's go to a boxing match or a UFC fight, do they not have rituals? Maybe they have the certain music or you have the, the certain, you know, whatever they are wearing or the things that they do in order to connect and to, you know, do some type of prayer. They have a ritual before going out. You hear of those, you know, the rituals of, of those baseball players that never change their socks because it'll break their winning streak or their batting streak. These are all types of rituals and the symbolism is behind what it is they carry. The music can be it as they're coming out, right? The socks for them. Maybe they never want to, you know, I don't know, you don't wash your glove, but you know, those type of things, those are all part of that ritual aspect of it. And sometimes it's because you heard another one do it and then you've picked up on that as well. That is why I love this topic. Now, when we get back from the break, we're going to talk about how we use rituals in our daily lives. And I'm going to take you through each step. We're going to connect with your spirit team as well on how to go about that in a positive way and to allow ourselves to be able to have a different way to express and know that it's okay that we are in that safe space. So join me. It is, it's August 7th. So it's the first Saturday of the month uh, for our sacred circle group reading. Okay. And in that, uh, we are including a healing circle. <laughs> Look at that. We've got a ritual going on. 
where LaShawn and I come together and we work with you and your energy. We plan out our healing circles about a week ahead of time. We know pretty much the group that's coming. Uh, sometimes there might be, you know, you might need to shake a rattle and, and we've got drums out and, and you just get to express that way. Uh, not all the time. Uh, last month we sat around the pool, kept our feet in the water. Uh, LaShawn took us through a, a, a gratitude meditation and then we just wrote and connected that way. There's all different aspects that we're going to do on this. We're both Reiki masters. So it's, and uh, what I love is that a lot of our, our community that comes together for these are also in the healing aspects. Some are Reiki practitioners, some are shamanic practitioners. We all come together and share those moments together. That's a ritual. That's a positive thing to bring into our life. And then if you want to connect with your spirit team, if you want to do it in a genuine, authentic way, if you want to do it where you connect and then your connection can actually help someone else in that group with a message and learn how to give messages with your spirit team. That's how I do this. I connect with my spirit team and then they bring me the energies that need to come through. My mediumship gets stronger every single time I do this and connect. And so you guys are going to get to practice that in the circle, encompassing your spirit team, bringing them in circling up. I cannot wait to teach this class. It's just an evolution of classes I've taught before. And then the empath class, because a lot of us are empaths. We feel that energy around. Okay. And being able to connect on that level. So I'm going to go ahead and take my break now so we can come back and use a little extra of that time to talk about the rituals in our everyday lives and how we can connect with them to continue our manifesting and growing for ourselves in our transformation. See you right after this break. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to I Have Soul Radio. I am psychic medium, Jamie. You know, I really enjoyed our Shades of Spirit show yesterday. So I encourage you to go back. It's on podcast form. How do I know? Because I got my notification, Shades of Spirit podcast ready. I believe that was Apple Music. Uh, because we interviewed Charles Lydell. Chuck Lydell is what he goes by. And he is native to Catalina Island. We're going to do a follow-up show with him. Absolutely amazing individual. And the show was called Haunted Catalina. And so I want you guys to listen to that, connect with him, hear his story, hear some stories of Catalina Island, uh, because it was just really cool to have someone with such knowledge. He's the island historian and the uh, official island greeter. He, you know, just has so much personality. I want you guys to go listen to our show from yesterday uh, at five o'clock. It's called Haunted Catalina. So let's connect here because I've got two things. We're going to go through how we use rituals in our daily lives. And then I pulled a card at break from my magic spell card book. Okay. Um, magical spell cards. I love this. I absolutely love it. It is of power. It is of empowerment. It's about connecting. And the card I pulled couldn't be any more perfect for, I think, what a lot of us are looking for right now in our lives. So first, here we go. We use rituals in our daily lives. Wake up in a positive mind space. So a lot of people will put on their phones, will have sticky notes. Maybe they've got some type of quote on the back of their wall. So when they get up in the morning, well, I guess it'd be the front of their wall, um, they can see it. Uh, I know LaShawn, our luminous mystic, she writes on her mirror. So the first thing she does is she gets up. Obviously, we usually head to the restroom and all of her positive affirmations about herself, what she wants to manifest are right there. So she starts that day out in this ritualistic form of putting herself in a positive mind space. And when we do that, we ascend our energy and we start the day out in a much higher vibration. Those of you that, that your rituals to pick up your phone and read the news, well, a lot of times especially lately, uh, we picked that and we're already now putting ourselves in a lower vibration because we feel the energy of the news and what's going on, right? It, it isn't always going to be rainbows and ponies and kittens on there. So think about that. I want you to try that technique, waking up in a positive mind space with those gentle reminders. Journal. Some people like to journal. That's a, a type of ritualistic practice. Maybe they're journaling their dreams right? They get up in the morning and they write everything down from the night before. You guys have no idea how powerful that is in connecting you with your loved ones on the other side, your spirit team, what you've been out astral traveling and doing. It, it tells the story when we're asleep. And when you actually do this practice on a regular basis, you start to get the messages, which is beautiful. Stand outside and give thanks to sharing in a new day. 
giving gratitude. Go outside with your cup of coffee or tea in the morning. Ground your feet into Mother Earth. I don't care if it's the concrete because you're on a patio and you don't have any grass. Connect and feel the sun hitting your face and listen to the birds chirping for just a minute or two. It's all it takes, right? But as you start to do these, right, we're now creating a ritual. So maybe you wake up in that positive mind space. You've got your, your positive affirmations somewhere and you've seen them. You grab your journal. Maybe your positive affirmation is on the cover of your journal. Or maybe write one out in the front of it. So now you've seen it. You're in that positive mind space. You're writing down your, your dream, right? You're doing some dream recall. Get up, grab your coffee. Maybe it's water, whatever it is. Stand outside for a minute. Connect, ground, okay? Maybe you want to meditate. Some of you are meditators in the morning or do visualization exercises. I find that working on the most important project before reading any of my emails in the morning is very beneficial as well. Now, you guys might just think of these as, you know, what to do in the morning type of thing or, you know, it, ugh, that's not a ritual. These become ritualistic practices. There is no rhyme or reason to it. Plan the day for some people kind of clarifying and focusing on the three things that need to get done, right? And get them out of the way and then enjoy the rest of the day, keeping yourself in that positive mind space. I have one client who goes for a walk every day outside at lunch. That is a ritual to her. She holds that very near and dear. She does a visualization, active meditation. She connects, she's outside, she's grounding. But that for her isn't just, oh, I just do it every day. It becomes a ritualistic practice. When you miss it, you start to feel it. So I want you guys to understand that as well. When we miss a day, right, we start to feel that and the energy disruption. And so then when we do it the next day and we connect, we bring that energy back up. Connect with at least one friend each day. That's a work in progress. Maybe it is just to shoot them a quick text. Maybe it's to pick up the phone. Sometimes we need that contact, if you will, to hear someone's voice. Connect with at least one business contact. If you are business owners, why would you not want to connect with one business contact? Send them out a quick little note, right? Continue keeping that vibration going. Exercise can be re very real. I am having a hard time trying to say all these words at the same time, uh, ritualistic for us. It puts us into that space of going and doing it. It becomes routine, right? Sometimes when I get home and I know that I've got a house full of kids and they're running around and it's just a crazy day, my little ritual will be to sit quietly around the corner, <laughs> if it's safe, close my eyes for a moment and just connect, regroup, relax before walking through that door. Um, you know what can also be a ritual, you guys? I know, don't shake your heads at me reading or storytelling with your kids. But why is that, right? The storytelling is part of that myths. It's part of the symbols. And so many cultures do that, right? I love listening to the stories that the elders have to say. I am enthralled by what they show us, right? Set up the coffee maker the night before. That seems to be my ritual. It's just, yeah, I, coffee is my best friend in the morning. Um, one day we'll stop that ritual and replace it with something else, but I am ritualistic in that. There is no doubt about that. Um, you know what? Maybe it's putting your clothes out and being organized in that standpoint of it. Some people are very ritualistic on that. They're, they're just, that's, that's the structure they need. One thing I want you guys to work with is visualize, visualize your top three intentions, goals, or dreams before you go to bed. Chalk that up. If you can do that before you go to sleep and in the morning you wake up in a positive mind space, you are going to keep that going. You're going to keep that energy on the up and up and you're going to be able to manifest and create what you want. Now, those are basic ones that we can do every day. Some of you are already doing them. How can you amplify them? Each one of them can be amplified by calling in your spirit team. Connect with your angels. I like to connect with the ascended masters lately and working with them, bringing that wisdom in. So if I am exercising or taking that walk or doing that meditation, I am allowing them to come through in my practice to be able to deliver the messages for me. So you can amplify each one of these. If I'm out having my cup of coffee with the birds singing in the sun and I'm standing outside and kind of grounding in that space, 
I'm also going to call in my spirit team. Or maybe I just want to have coffee with my grandmother and feel the love connection, right? And then she's going to send me a sign or symbol that day to know that she's with me for the rest of that day. So it might be that butterfly comes flying through and you're like, I haven't seen a butterfly in this backyard in months. And then you get to work and you go about your day and, and, and maybe you take that walk at lunch and all of a sudden that white butterfly comes through. That's a symbol. Then maybe you tune in and you hear the, the myths, the stories that she used to tell you and you build that connection even stronger. These are all things we can do, we can do every day. And they are positive and it's not what you think it is or what you've seen on you know tv shows of this ritualistic stuff that's dark and demeaning and, and hurtful no i mean it is out there but enlightenment love power of prayer coming together positive words all of that counteracts any of this and in doing so the card i pulled for all of us today is prosperity and it's number three. So I want you guys, if you are thinking about the show, I want you to see number threes, three, 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 33. And I want you to tune into this show and how you can continue to create the prosperity through your own rituals, right? So for me, yeah, it's a little bit of candle magic, okay? It's gonna be a little bit of writing and releasing. It's gonna be connecting with the universe. It's gonna include my fire. It's going to help release that energy out. This card says, as the tree grows so strong, so fine, so may I prosper from the divine, right? So it says money and wealth are highly charged issues in our culture. The simple prosperity spell will help you realize your material desires and needs through the generations of money. With this card, with this spell chooses you, it signifies the simple truth that there need not be any guilt or suffering around obtaining money. Money is simply one form of manifested property and indeed of energy. So the prosperity spell says you will need three green ribbons. This is very some easy. You can gather these items at home. Charge these on your altar or maybe in your window cell overnight during a waxing moon and then get ready to head out into nature to complete the spell, right? It's just another name for ritual practice. So what you're going to do is you're going to find a thriving, healthy young tree near you and bind the three green ribbons over its strongest branch. Then whisper this three times. As this tree grows so strong, so fine, so may I prosper from the universal divine. And as the tree grows and as it's weathered, once you see your ribbons start to disintegrate and come off, you're going to, or worn through, you're going to know that your spell, your ritual has now completely been released into the universe and then be open to receiving. That's all I got for you guys today. Thank you so much. Join us next week for Shades of Spirit at 5 p.m. on Wednesday. Have a good weekend. Thank you for listening in on Eye of Soul Radio on TransformationTalkRadio.com with me, Psychic Medium Jamie. Return here next time so you can explore more of the lower level energies, realms, or dimensions. We will go through more darker spirit stories and provide more guidance and self-growth to those who need it. For more information about me, Psychic Medium Jamie, and the Eye of Soul, visit eyeofsoulradio.com. That's eyeofsoulradio.com. Eye of Soul Radio only on transformationtalkradio.com. See you next time.